Hi, so this is our traffic simulator using that view. What we're trying to do is to uh, control a two-way traffic uh, light uh, using my view. And we implemented all the logic for controlling the circuit in an FPGA, FPGA target file, which um, we already compiled and we already loaded onto the my view but this is what this file looks like and it's basically a state machine and it uh, we have four states which correspond to uh, the four um, four different configurations of the traffic lights which is basically north south red east west green north south uh, red east west yellow and north south green east west red and then north south yellow east west red um but basically it's it's a simple state machine and we implement all the logic uh in this fpga target file and then we have the digital inputs and outputs uh that we basically read and write to um so here we are basically reading the state of the lights and then we're writing to the buttons. But um, so once we compile this code, we don't need to be running this um, file again. So we designed an RT interface instead, uh, which looks like this, where you can uh, simply just, without uh, dealing with any of the logic, just read the inputs uh, and read the states of the lights and then write to the buttons. So you can also virtually control uh, the by pressing the buttons and at the same time you can also press the buttons manually for crossing uh, the street from here. So right now uh, this is just crossing it and you just saw that over there also it just changed uh, the lights. If I press the button for crossing this street which corresponds to the north south it should uh change uh faster and here as you can see that's turning yellow and red that's also that just turned and now this also changed um at the same time you can also uh press the buttons over here uh you can so if it's already uh in the walk state, you pressing the north-south button doesn't really affect it. Uh, that's just how we built our um, logic because if, if it's already um, you know enabled to walk, there's no need for you to be pressing the button. If you press it, nothing happens. Uh, the other thing we want to point out is how the timing works. Uh, so if you don't, if you press the button uh, with um, only um, eight seconds remaining before the state has to change, it really doesn't do anything. It just waits to finish out its time. However, say if uh, uh, there are 26 seconds that the state is normally supposed to last and you press the button, uh, say 12 seconds into it, there were still um, more than eight seconds left. So it's gonna now deduct eight seconds from uh, the end time so it will wait for 22 seconds instead of waiting for sorry it will wait for 18 seconds instead of waiting 26 seconds so as you saw it changed the state faster um, we could have you know, basically we did implement that over here um, in the actual FPGA target uh, you would have been able to see if this file was running but that's already the, um, compiled and running over there uh, so basically that's it, um, a simple state machine with an RT interface. The other thing I want to point out is that even if I close this file, since the FPGA code is already on this thing, uh, it, it will still keep running. And um, so this is our project. Uh, I just wanted to point out another thing that we have wirelessly connected uh, the F my Rio to the project using the wireless IP address instead of the Ethernet IP address. So as you can see, we haven't used these cables over here. It's uh, just using the wireless IP. Uh, we have connected it to the project over here. And uh, even after closing the RT file, uh, the RT GUI file, 
which is not running right now as you can see it's uh, this is still running because the code is already loaded on to the FPGA target. Here we are going to demonstrate the web-based uh, communication. So right now I'm going to open up the RT GUI with the TCP server and run this file. Uh, this is basically the same file that we had before, uh, similar to the RT GUI. Uh, but now this has a TCP server in it and all that the server does is that it has a TCP uh, listen port which uh, checks to see if uh, any client has connected at that port and if it has then it uh, writes the state of the six lights and the two walk buttons to the TCP and it reads the state of the cross north south and east west buttons in case the uh, client has pressed those and then uh, it, uh, it basically ch checks for errors um, if there is a connection is lost then it closes the TCP server loop uh, so while this is running you can see that here the traffic lights are um, also corresponding to that we have the north south and east west switch to happen over here but basically it's um, corresponding so we're going to run the TCP client now. Um, so right now I'm running this on my own computer, but basically it's requiring the host address, which is basically the IP address uh, that this is using by being connected uh, through Wi-Fi. And this should work just equally fine on another computer, uh, but my lab partner is not here. Uh, so I'm just running the client on my own PC, but uh, this is independent. As you can see, this is not part of the project uh, file, the Mario project file. Uh, this is independent. So if we run this VI now, you can see that they are basically uh, communicating with each other in real time because this host address is the same host address that we saw in this project over here, 192.168.1.26. Uh, that's the IP address that we're sending uh, uh, over here. So if I press the east-west buttons, you can see that it reflected over here as well. And I can't press the cross-north-south buttons while this is already set for walk because that's not something that um, it's uh, redundant. Uh, again, similarly, if I press the cross north south button while it's red, it reflects on the server VI. And all it basically means is the host address, the IP address of that. So if we have a quick look at this VI, um, it's basically just, uh, it runs a while loop to see first if a connection has formed. If a connection has not formed, it's going to keep running to check if a connection is formed. Once it does form a connection, it basically first um, uh, checks, uh, first reads information coming from the server. So it finds out what the state of the lights is and the walk buttons is. And then after that, uh, it determines um, uh, it determines uh, whether we can press the cross buttons or not. And then if, if the client presses them, it communicates that information back uh, to the server. So here I'm going to demonstrate that we can actually run the client and server on different computers and it still works as long as the client has the IP address of the MyRio over here. Uh, so if the MyRio is just wirelessly connected uh, to both the, com uh, basically to this application and that's the IP address over there. And we're running the server on my computer and the client on another one. And as you can see, we put the IP address over there. Now, if I'm going to press the cross north south button over here, the north south, oh, well, east west now, uh, that also causes the east west button over here to be pressed. And then you can see that the lights would, would change color. Um, well, both of these change color as well, so there, that changed color and that changed color. Now the north-south button over here is pressed, 
and then the north south button over here got pressed too because the client and the server can communicate with each other so that's it Okay, so this is our um, traffic simulator uh, using LabVIEW. Um, we wrote our code using um, single board Rio um, and an FPGA. Um, our main logic is controlled on the single board Rio, and our digital IOs are um, implemented through the FPGA. We're going to see what happens when I run this. Here it's loading onto the single board Rio. And if Saudi will zoom in, you can see um, right now we um, are just simulate, simulating um, t an intersection of two one-way streets um, going north, south, and east, west. Um, we're using a finite state machine to characterize each state. Um, you can see that um, we have 
various counters for every state, keeping track of how long that the lights need to um, stay at their state. Um, we see that if we come here to the um, to Seaboard Rio, we can see that we have um, a, a real time, um, or sorry, a physical display showing the exact same output as our um, simulation. So you can kind of, I guess, look between the, the computer and the, um, the board. You'll see that the two outputs are the same. Right here we have um, these. We have virtual switches to simulate pedestrians wanted to cross. And on the board we have real life switches. So let's pay attention to one of the timers coming up here. So right now we have a green and a red light switching to yellow. Here you can see that in this state you need to wait 26 seconds to cross, but I'm going to press the button. Now this is the initial wait time of 26 seconds, now you only have to wait 18 seconds. And you can see that the yellow light changed faster. And likewise, um, the same happens when I come over here press this switch that the state will um, change at 18 seconds instead of 26 seconds. Um, we can also test it with the virtual buttons as well. So right here um, north-south is red. If I want to cross north-south you can see that the button is pressed that I should only have to wait an effective 18 seconds. Um, we can also demonstrate that this will take a little bit longer, but if um, if there is less than eight seconds left on the timer, um, then your button will effectively not work. So right here, east-west is red, and I want to cross east-west. I'm just going to wait to see what happens. Fast 18. Um, the light went on, but it showed that the button was not pressed, and we still had to wait the effective 26 seconds. Um, and then the same goes for the um, the real-time display here. So while Saudi's looking here, I'm just going to see that I'm waiting to see if uh, 18 seconds have passed, and I'll tell her when to press it. Right now, she needs to press the north-south. Press it. And I'm looking here, you look really fast. You can see that you still have to wait the entire 26 seconds and nothing happens. Um, we'll come over here, you can see our FPGA code is reading in, um, it's reading in the inputs from our, um, um, from our simulation VI and it's writing those to the uh, to the LEDs that we have on the board um, right here it's reading in the switches we have on the board and it's using that to write to our virtual um, crosswalk buttons um, over here this is our finite state machine which effectively controls the logic here we have four states We use a shift register to transition between each state, um, and our logic mainly consists of keeping track of the, the current time in a state, whether or not you've pressed the cross bot button to walk, um, decrementing the time, um, seeing if a button is pressed already, then you shouldn't do anything. Um, here it's calling the FPGA target, it's initializing it. Over here it's, it's taking the um, the, the virtual outputs that you should get and it's writing to the FPGA um, which is being output into the circuit board um, over here um, I think it's in this. if you look at this state right here we're actually reading in information from the FPGA and we're seeing if one of the real buttons has been pressed um, if a real button or a virtual button has been pressed, then we will 
um, transition uh, to the shortened time if more than eight seconds remain. Um, and uh, this is this was a great example for us to learn how to do a finite state machine in LabVIEW, as well as get some nice uh, FPGA practice.